Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In the past, I've done some videos on ACDC Photo Studio 8 for Mac. Recently, they've released an update to Photo Studio. It's called ACDC Photo Studio 9 for Mac. And I'm very careful to say for Mac because the Windows version of the application is called ACDC Photo Studio 2023. And actually, that Windows version has some features in it that aren't included in the Mac version. Specifically, with the Windows version, you'll be able to stitch a panorama, merge an HDR, or do some focus stacking. Also, the Windows version has a dedicated set of portrait editing tools. You won't find any of those things in the Mac version, at least not yet. And unfortunately, I do not own a PC, so I cannot demo ACDC Photo Studio 2023. So instead, I'll be demoing ACDC Photo Studio 9 for Mac. In the description below this video will be a link to their website. They have fully working free trials for both platforms. So you could get a fully working free trial of Photo Studio 9 for Mac, or if you have a Windows PC, you could get a fully working free trial of Photo Studio 2023. So let's get started. What you're looking at again is ACDC Photo Studio 9 for Mac. And it has pretty much the features you would expect a non-destructive RAW editor to have. It has a digital asset management section or a library module. They call it Manage. And in Manage, you can see on the left-hand side are my folders. I am currently in a folder that has two images in it. Over on the right-hand side, you can see that you could do all the things you would expect to be able to do. It has something called Categories. This is akin to Lightroom's collections. So you could take images from different folders and group them together in categories. Um, and it comes with some default categories, album, people. Also, I should uh, mention that Photo Studio 9 for Mac, and I believe this is the same for Photo Studio 2023, it has facial recognition. So if you do uh, take a lot of photos of people, it will recognize the faces of the people and put them in the correct category. So it has a people category, it has places, and then various. And you could add your own. You can see there's a little plus sign there. You also could give um, your images a rating, a typical rating or a color label. It has keywords you could do. Um, so it has all those things you would expect to be able to do with any digital asset manager. But the real kind of meat and potatoes is actually editing an image. And you would do that over here in the develop mod. So we'll go over to develop. And I don't think I want to edit that one. Let's edit this one. Now, by default, you'll notice that the editing tools are on the left panel. And over on the right panel, we have presets, snapshot, and history. And again, that's pretty much everything you would expect, right? You're hoping that it would have presets. Yes, there's presets. You would hope that you'd be able to take snapshots. So you may develop an image a certain way, take a snapshot of your development at that point, then maybe try some experimental things and do some other things. And if you don't like what you do, you did, you could go back to your snapshot and pick up from that point again. But it has full history as well. So you could go back in steps. Each step you do, you could go back to a previous uh, point in your editing. So it has that. You can see up here that it has a histogram. Uh, and I mentioned the editing tools though are over here on this left-hand panel. Now that's by default. You could actually switch this. To do that, you would go up to settings. Now on a Mac with ACD Photo Studio 9 for Mac, settings happens to be under the ACD Photo Studio 9 menu. I would imagine, now I don't have a PC, but I would imagine that for Photo Studio 2023, that settings will be on, under the edit menu. When you go to settings, uh, you would go to the develop tab and you could switch it to the right. Just click it and you can see it automatically switch. So if you're coming over from Lightroom and you're really used to the controls being on the right hand panel, you could do that here. Now. The controls might be a little bit different though. You can see that there isn't really like uh, shadows, highlights, whites, blacks. Instead, it has highlight recovery and fill light. And the way you would work with these is fill light basically is to add light 
or make brighter the darkest part of the image. And highlight recovery is to make darker the brightest part of the image. So you can see they're at zero by default. So you, if I move fill light to the right, you can see it's making the darker parts, pretty much the whole image though, brighter. And then I want to recover that highlight. And I started to blow out some of those clouds. I could move this and you can see how we affect it that way. We could add contrast, we could add saturation, we could add clarity, we could add a little bit of dehaze like that. It also has a just a master exposure slider as well. Uh, so satisfied with what I've done under general. You can see that the other tabs here we have white balance. White balance is good on this image. Light EQ it has three different types of light EQ. It has a basic light EQ and here we have individual sliders for shadows, midtones, and highlights. It has a standard and here you could target a more specific part of the image. For example, over here are the darkest part. If I want to mark, make those darker parts lighter, I could push up here. You can see it's just making the darkest part a little lighter. And the ones next, like that. Let's reset that. And if you wanted to make, let's say, the brightest parts darker, you would go down to the bottom here and pull down. See how it's making the, dark, the lighter parts a little darker. Very easy to use. Go to Advanced, and Advanced has... Uh, this like slider here where you could brighten it and then change the amplitude. So you could fiddle around with these sliders at the top to get it close to what you want as far as the brightest parts of the image then with the darker parts of the image. Here, I'm going to reset it as well. Or if both standard and advanced are just a little bit confusing to you, you could just go back to basic here and you could go, let's say, to the shadow and open up the shadows. Bring in the highlights a little. Maybe bring down tons of touch. So you could do that as well. So Light EQ is very powerful, and I think that really will help make your image pop when you adjust any of these adjustments in Light EQ. Uh, color EQ is pretty much an HSL uh, control that is U, saturation, and luminance. Now instead of saturation, um, or instead of... Um, Luminance, they call it brightness, I should say. So if I go here and let's say I go to the blue for the sky, I can make the blue a little darker, but I could then add some saturation to it as well here. And then you could add contrast as well with different colors. But here I think it looks pretty good. So that's the color EQ. We have color wheel, and I'll do videos on more of these, some of these advanced tools in the future. Also, I should add with um, Photo Studio 9 for Mac, you're able to make slideshows. If you're interested in the slideshow functionality, let me know in the comments and I'll do a video uh, demonstrating how to create a slideshow with Photo Studio 9 for Mac. You have Tone Wheels. You have Tone Curve, the actual Tone Curve itself. You have Soft Focus. So if you want to give it a kind of a dreamy look, ethereal look, you could do that here with Soft Focus. It has cross-process. This is something that you would typically do with film, and most often uh, the way you would do it with film is you would shoot color negative film, but you would de develop it with co um, color positive chemicals. That means slide film. So you take the chemicals that you would normally would develop slides with, and you would then instead develop negatives with it. And you can see how it gives kind of a weird kind of, kind of color to the image. It has LUTs, so you could select a LUT, LUT, a LUT, I should say. We'll reset that. There's all different LUTs you could select. You also could import your own. Go to split toning, and you can see we could do the typical split toning uh, post crop vignette. Let's add a little bit of a darker. That maybe. And then we have an output color space. When you export this image, uh, do you, what color space do you want to use? Most of it, often when you export, you want to use the sRGB color space because that is the smallest color space and that will make sure that your image renders the same way on any device, meaning an older monitor to a newest monitor to an older phone to the newest phone. It'll all look alike. It's typically all that, you know, is for. But if you're going to use it maybe in another application, you're taking this over to Photoshop or something, you may want to use the largest color space, which would be Profoto RGB. Uh, but with that said, 
that's more advanced, something you really don't have to worry about. And so you can see then that's just this section called tune. Next to that, we have a detail section. And here we could do sharpening and noise reduction. So we could add some sharpening. There really is, uh, and you can see this, the little square in the middle, that's giving us the preview of what we're looking at here. So if we want to look at like this bird up here or up in here. We get some sharpening done. We have noise reduction there. Everything you would expect. Skin tune, if this was a portrait of a person. Uh, if you had any chromatic aberration, you could correct that there. And you could defringe anything there. So if you get some fringing, you hopefully take care of it there. Next to this, we have geometry. So if this uh, had structures in it, you know, it was a cityscape and buildings were falling backward or you lose a wide angle lens and things were distorted, you could fix that here with geometry and then repair. This is your typical kind of like um, clone and heal tool here and you have a red eye uh, correction as well. So you could do clone and heal. This image doesn't need any of that. So you can see it has everything you would expect a non-destructive raw editor to have. Very, very powerful application, in my opinion, a bit underrated. You don't hear about this application as much as you might uh, some of the others. But again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. As I mentioned, they have fully working free trials for both the Windows version, which is Photo Studio 2023, and the Mac version, which is Photo Studio 9. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.